things we do as artists even though deep down we know we probably shouldn't. I know I am guilty of so many of them myself. But avoiding these things can actually have a huge impact on your art and by still doing them you could be sabotaging your drawings without even realizing it. So here are eight things artists shouldn't do but probably still do. The first thing to do before drawing anything is figure out what we're going to draw. And this is where we can run into the first problem. Maybe you get a photo sent to you over WhatsApp. It's not really good enough for a drawing. You can't see any details, but you think, oh, I love the photo so much that I just have to draw this. Apps like WhatsApp can often compress the size of a photo and reduce the quality of that photo quite a lot. So if you do get sent a photo that doesn't look very good quality it might be worth asking the person to just email you the original photo as well because that might be much better quality when we have a bad reference it's really hard to create a realistic drawing because there's so much information that's lost there's no harm in drawing it you've just got to lower your expectations my favorite part of the entire drawing process is actually shading in my drawing the sketch can feel just like a part of the drawing process that I've got to get through. It takes so long and I just want to get to the shading part. I'm so excited to start shading and adding all of those beautiful details. The sketch is the foundation of your drawing. If you've got a good sketch, you're more likely to have a good drawing. If you have a bad sketch, then no amount of great shading will fix problems with a bad sketch. And once you've started adding loads of shading and you then figure out that your proportions are wrong, it's so much harder to fix that because you've already added shading maybe you've layered some darker pencils in there make sure that you do spend that extra time double checking these are things that we know we know we should make our sketch accurate before we start shading we know we should double check our sketch how many times have you had to deal with this because one thing that I know that I should do as an artist is put something under my hand when I draw. In all honesty, I just don't like to. I like to be able to see my entire drawing, but really we all know we should because what ends up happening is we get graphite and charcoal all over our hands and we just smudge it all around the drawing. And then we have to spend ages with an eraser trying to fix all of the areas that we've smudged accidentally. There are some mediums like Color pencils that don't actually smudge much anyway, especially wax-based pencils like the Prismacolors. Sometimes I've had a bit of smudging happen with the oil-based pencils like the Faber-Castell Polychromos. In those cases, you might wanna put a bit of tracing paper under your hand to prevent that. And if you are using supplies that smudge like graphite, charcoal, or pastel pencils, then consider putting something under your hand. Once I started planning out my drawings and finding what worked for me and what helped me in the planning stage, I made less mistakes and the whole drawing experience was just far more enjoyable and less frustrating. I know at the moment you might not be sold on the idea of planning and it may feel like more hassle than it's worth, but for realism, it has really been beneficial for me in helping to create a more realistic look. For example, I break down the light. So in this reference, I can see that the light is coming from this direction. Label some of the darkest values so I have an idea. I might label what types of tools I'm going to use for certain parts of the drawing and anything else that I think is important. This process doesn't have to take you very long. You know, 15, 20 minutes, but you are going to struggle to create realistic drawings if you don't understand some of the key fundamentals of realistic drawing. So if your drawings aren't quite looking as realistic as you want them to, then I recommend checking out a free training that I've done, a free mini class that just goes through some of the most important fundamentals of realistic drawings that you need to know so that you can start creating even more realistic drawings. I'll leave a link to that at the top of the description. Think back to when you were at school and you were in art class what pencil did you use for your drawings? If you're like me, I bet the only pencil you used to draw was the HB pencil. This was the only pencil we were given. And so for many years, I never knew there were other types of pencils. One common thing that I find with a lot of beginners drawings is they look very flat. They don't look very 3D. And that is because they're done entirely with a HB pencil. But actually graphite comes in so many different grades of pencils. You can get a HB, but 
you can also get 2B, 4B, 8B, or in the pencil set that I love, you can get a 14B pencil. And when you start to use these darker pencils to do your shading, your drawings will have so much more depth, they'll have more contrast, and so they will stand out more and they will grab your attention more. So why then do I see so many beginner artists still only use the HB pencil for their drawings? I think what it comes down to is the fact that the HB pencil just feels so much safer. If you do something wrong, it's super easy to erase and try again. A darker pencil like this 14B, once you start going in and shading with this, no matter how light you press, it's still pretty dark. And this can feel scary because the markings may feel more permanent. Even though you can get decent results with just the HP pencil, you won't be able to get to that next level of realism and create drawings that really pop and look super realistic. Now this next mistake is so common and I see artists of all different skill levels doing it. And this this mistake happens when you're working on drawings that look like this one, where it's very detailed, you've got a lot going on, a lot of different elements and every part of the drawing is detailed. Even though we know we shouldn't, it is tempting to rush through the background in our drawings and any areas that we are finding a little bit tricky or feel a little bit tedious to draw, like the fabric, if you've got a really repetitive pattern that's taking up a lot of your drawing. But the problem is, when you rush through these areas, they really do stick out like a sore thumb. And they really do bring down the entire standard of the drawing. And they actually pull attention away from the thing you actually want them to be looking at. One thing that I'm sure a lot of us still do, even though we know we shouldn't, is blend with our finger. But I know there's probably some of you thinking, wait, why can't we blend with our finger? What's wrong with that? I love blending with my finger. Well, the problem is when you blend with your finger, you can actually get oil residue from your finger onto the paper, which means that you can get dirty marks that don't really erase and it's not easy to layer and work with them. And it's harder to get smooth shading. You are much more likely to end up with a patchy result that's pretty hard to fix. When I'm blending, I either use a blending stump or tissue. But even though I know that blending with my finger can potentially ruin my drawings, I still do it sometimes. Mainly not when I'm in the drawing process, but once I've done a drawing and I look back at it and I see an area that just needs to be blended a little bit more and I've got my finger there and I haven't got any other blending tools and I just go in and I just quickly blend it out. But even in these cases, it's worth taking the time to go and get that blending stump or some tissue and blend it out properly. If you think back to your last five drawings, what were they of? Were they of different things, the same things? Were you using different supplies, different mediums? Or was it five portraits in a row using graphite? Because the thing is, we like to stay in our comfort zones. We like to do the things we're good at and the things that we know. We know that we should mix it up, we should experiment, we shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes and we should try new things. But that still doesn't stop us from um, staying in that comfort zone. I know that I love drawing portraits and it's my favorite thing to draw. But when I draw animals or landscapes, I learn so much from that experience and I learn things that I can then apply to my portraits to make them even better. It's important to remember that to grow as an artist, we need to keep trying new things. It's good to experiment. We have that fear of failure. We feel like we can't ever produce a bad drawing because then people won't think we're good anymore. But that's not sustainable. Every drawing you make can't be your best drawing. If every drawing you do is good or great, it probably means that you're not experimenting enough and making mistakes. Remember, mistakes are how we learn and grow. It can be difficult to want to try new subjects and new supplies when you don't feel confident with the stuff you're already drawing. So if that's you and you want to make more realistic drawings, then check out this video here where I go through six really quick, easy ways that you can start seeing improvements with your very next drawings. Check out that video next and I'll see you there.